Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com and in this video we're going to talk about Christian suffering. This video is meant to tie in with our verse-by-verse -verse study through the epistle to the Thessalonians. So I wanted to bring some clarity, some uh, perspective into the subject of suffering uh, from a New Testament perspective, particularly by Paul in the New Testament. Now, I don't mean to minimize in any, any way the importance of physical uh, suffering, uh, everything from uh, hitting your thumb with a hammer uh, to getting cancer and having to go through chemotherapy or, or any, your house burning down or any number of tragedies that can occur in life. That's not the point of this video. Christians do indeed suffer. We suffer in, in many, many ways. So I wanna say at the outset of this that I wanna talk about suffering from a context, contextual standpoint. I wanna talk about it in context to our walk, our relationship with the Lord, our ministry, as we go forward through life preaching the gospel because there is a direct connection between monergism, that is a, a God-only redemption, uh, salvation by grace alone and that through faith, and synergism, which is man cooperates. God doesn't do anything unless man acts first. If you followed this channel, you know where I stand on the gospel, that the gospel is what Christ has done not what we must do to be born again. That uh, we did in fact receive, we did in fact believe, we did in fact repent of our sins. We did all that, but it, that was not the cause for new birth. It was the actual, actually it was the result of new birth. Many understand this to be the difference between Calvinism and Arminianism. Uh, preferably, uh, I mean, I don't like the term Calvinism. Uh, it, it's not. It's not that you know we're you're of a, you're of Paul and you're of Apollos and you're of Steve and so on and so forth. It is no Calvinist in it, or doctrinally, you know, speaking, should ever have to apologize for being a follower of Calvin, because our te our present text teaches us that we have become copies, imitators of, of not only God, but of one another. We're only uh, similar or identical, actually we're identical in every sense of the term. We identify with Calvin concerning the, the gospel that he preached. Quite simply put, Calvin believed in the gospel he believed in monergism, that we're born again, not because of anything that we did, but because of what Christ did. That the new birth is, is a work of God alone in the life of the believer. That we were born again by the will of God, not the will of the flesh. That's what Calvin believed, and that is what I believe. That's what many of you believe. That's not what a lot of Christians believe, but that is the gospel. Calvinism defines the gospel. And there's a direct relationship between that and suffering as Paul presents it in the New Testament, particularly uh, in Romans through Peter. So I'm going to talk about that. Concerning that, that word, uh, suffer, uh, pathema is the word, suffer, affliction, uh, it can be, it, depending on the context, it can be translated affliction, passion, emotion, uh, an undergoing, uh, an enduring. Uh, pathema is not inherently negative. It's only negative when experienced apart from faith. So it's important that we understand word meanings. It's important that we understand context if we want to get a full grasp of what, of what it really truly means to suffer for the sake of Christ and His body. 
Now there's other words such, you know, as in many other words, such as trouble, trials, testing, affliction, persecution, opposition, etc., etc. But in this video, I'm only going to be talking about that word, pathema, suffer. We see 31 occurrences, uh, Romans through Peter. And all of these occurrences, and I don't have time to go through them all, but they're, all of them reveal reason, purpose, and result. Now, you may be surprised to know that in those 31 occurrences, that there's barely a mention, if any, of, of where the word pathema is used to describe suffering that uh, unassociated with things spiritual. It's most always in the context of or, or associated with ministry. And uh, our lives, folks, are defined by ministry. Our walk, our ministry, it, it pretty much defines who we are. And it defines our walk and our relationship with the Lord. And that has a, a, a direct connection to Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. Now, of those 31 occurrences, e each one of these could be an entire video. Each, But out of those references, we can easily see how that the word suffer, we can see how the word suffer is used. And there, there are only six aspects of that word that I have seen, and I want to uh, briefly go over those, those six aspects. Once again, the word is pathema, and it's because of the gospel and the opposition that it, it, it encounters, uh, we suffer. We suffer because of the gospel and because of the opposition that it encounters by a world religious system based on human merit. We also can see from these references that uh, it, we suffer because of the personal sin of the flesh, which we have, it's said that we have crucified. Uh, we know that there's coming a day in which we will, our bodies will be redeemed, delivered from uh, this body of flesh. But we suffer in relationship to, to sin, personal sin. That we suffer for the comfort and the salvation of others. We suffer for the sake of His body, the church. And just as Christ suffered for our comfort, okay, we suffer for the comfort of others. Just as He suffered for our comfort, we share in His suffering. It is the same suffering. And please don't misunderstand, I'm not trying to compare any believer to Christ in the sense that we suffered what He suffered on the cross. That's not what I'm talking about. The suffering that He endured at the hands of sinners, we share that in common. And we also see that suffering is what makes us complete. The word is, is translated in the, uh, the King James. You'll see it translated uh, perfect or perfected. We're perfected through suffering. We're made complete, whole, complete through that suffering. And it has a result. All of this has a result, that result being uh, an overflow of joy when His glory is revealed. So all of that reveals reason, purpose, and result. And the amazing thing, folks, about Christian suffering, I'm talking about true Christian suffering, is, is that this is something that legalism, law-keeping, walking according to the flesh, living according to self, does not know. If, if uh, show me a believer who's walking according to the flesh, who's trying to be the best Christian he can be, who's living under the law, I'll show you a believer who doesn't understand, doesn't recognize, does not even experience 
personally experience has never come to experience true Christian suffering as Paul explains that to us through that word that one single word pathema you became followers imitators of us and the Lord okay that's fellowship having received the word in much affliction and I pointed out that's the challenge of coping with the internal pressure of a trial, a tribulation, a hardship. You know, especially when you feel like that there's no way of escape. You feel confined, hemmed in, trapped. In the midst of much opposition from others. We, we learned that from Acts chapter 17. Uh, the context was what? The context was Jewish persecution religious in nature and and I pointed this out before too untold numbers of our brethren have died horrible deaths because of their suffering their testimony of faith regarding the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ which most Christians today hate and I, I have no reservations about saying that pretty hot out here in southeastern Oklahoma we've gone into the month of July I believe today's July 3rd tomorrow's uh, July 4th could be off off a day there but it's pretty warm out here but as I mentioned also in my last video I wanted to get outside and and just uh, speak to you all from uh, uh, w w without the confines of a small uh, office room. Uh, you were examples to all that believe, that is all believers. We're a st we are a stamp struck by a die, a figure. We're copies, image, images. We're patterns, we're models of one another. We're types. That, that shows unity, folks. That shows oneness. If one believer suffers, all the rest do. There's a unity that's connected to that suffering. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which uh, in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have, have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Okay, so suffering is not, the, it is a result of the opposition that arises as a result of our preaching, at, from, from our preaching the gospel, the opposition, we're confronted with that opposition, even though it's Jewish, religious in nature, that is law keeping, legalism, even though that is the, just as, you know, Jesus stood before the, the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees and and they, they criticized him. They, they, in fact, they condemned him, put him to death. He was persecuted. He was, he was troubled. He was afflicted. He, he suffered at the hands of sinners he su in the sense that he suffered th the opposition that he encountered, folks. The point I'm trying to make here is it's the same with us. It may not be Jewish. You know, uh, if you live in Ireland, you know, uh, and, you, and you suffer that same opposition that comes uh, your way in, in the sense of of those who believe that we uh, the Christian life is a system that's that's lived on the basis of human merit that's what I'm trying to say we see that even the text brings that out which, which says for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen even as they have of the Jews that's that's my point Legalism can't know. They can't know. It can't know. It's impossible. It cannot know and understand or experience true Christian suffering as it regards personal sin. Okay? Oh, but Steve, now wait a minute now. Uh, are you telling me that even legalists don't have, uh, don't suffer in regard to sin? Listen, folks. One who is living according to the law, that is, walking according to the flesh, cannot possibly know 
understand or experience true Christian suffering as it regards personal sins since, okay, since, here's why, the law is the strength of sin and any attempt to overcome personal sin by means of law keeping, that is the flesh, results in what? We know what that results in. It results in personal pride, which is itself a sin. They cannot understand, relate. They don't, they don't get it. They, they can't understand true Christian suffering in the sense that God intended we suffer. And by the way, uh, it needs pointed out here, it's, it's highly important that I tell you that uh, when we look at Christian suffering in the New Testament, we don't look at it in the negative sense, though it doesn't feel uh, very good at the time. In fact, it can be horrific. Christian suffering can be intense. We all know that. But, but Christian suffering in the sense that Paul uses that word pathema, is there's nothing negative about it. In fact, it's... Cons you know, I'm sure that most of you would agree with me that if you're sick and you take medicine, the medicine doesn't taste good, but it helps you get better. Think of suffering in the same way. Don't look at suffering in the negative sense. Look at it, as, at it in the positive sense. The same would be true as if you had cancer and you were having to undergo chemotherapy. The chemotherapy is the suffering. It, it produces God's intended result in the life of the believer. And I pointed this out numerous times. You uh, take away the gospel. If, if, if you're not preaching the gospel, folks, that is what Christ did. If you're not preaching that, that gospel, the gospel that was once delivered unto the saints, if you're not preaching that, you will not encounter that opposition. There won't be any suffering. Oh, you may suffer. You may suffer in a great number of ways from, you know, physically, even perhaps spiritually, you may suffer some sense of persecution for preaching a false gospel. People can throw rocks at you for preaching a false gospel. My point is, is that it's not ever to be looked at from a negative standpoint. God sees it as profitable. It's profitable. It's needful. It's, it's important that we suffer for His sake and for the sake of His body, the church. So legalism can't know true Christian suffering since that suffering is a shared suffering that's experienced only by those who share in Christ's suffering and suffer for the sake of the gospel as well as His body, the church. Therefore, it cannot know, it cannot know, it cannot experience, it's impossible for it to experience and know and truly understand the comfort that God defines as being associated with it. Okay? So a Christian can have a false sense of comfort. Well, I was preaching that man must do something to be saved. They're throwing rocks at me. Uh, one of them hit me. Uh, put a big knot on my head and, and now you know I'm suffering uh, yeah I've really suffered and but God's 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 comforting me and folks it's a false sense of comfort folks we face an enemy that is crafty okay he's very real and he will convince the believer that he's suffering for Christ when he's not. He'll convince the believer that he's receiving comfort from God when he's not. We have to stick with God's Word. We have to place a high enough value on Scripture, on God's Word, to, to want to understand the meanings of, of these words, the context in which they were written, and how that applies to our lives. So it's not known by those who walk according to the flesh, according to law. Our suffering being no different than our Lord's, though it, it may not result in physical death, death, you know, the death of a cross. And certainly uh, God doesn't ever heap the entire uh, sins of, of, of mankind on us. 
I'm not trying to compare ourselves with Christ in any way, folks. I'm trying to, I'm just showing you the relationship between the shared suffering, the, the, how that the suffering is shared between us and one another and with the Lord. Same suffering. It's not different. I don't have, it's not that I have my suffering, you have your suffering, Christ had his suffering, and, and we're all suffering differently here. That's not how Paul presents this. Not only is our suffering no different than what the Lord endured at the hands of sinners, it was, it was God's purpose that it be so. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. John 15, 20. In John 15, 25, they hated him without a cause. Without purpose, without reason. For no reason. And as they do us. It needs pointed out that legalism cannot know true Christian suffering given the fact that there is no opposition to it. There's no opposition. Grace certainly doesn't persecute law keeping. Okay, it's 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 the other way around. Christian persecution toward law keeping isn't recognized in the Word of God, but but the exact reverse. The religious system based on human merit, which walks according to the flesh, is what persecutes those who walk according to the Spirit. Only and only the Holy Spirit of God could could drive us down this path of discovery and clarity as it regards true Christian suffering in the context in which I'm explaining it to you here right now. I'm not saying that we, we can't stub our toe and fall down on our face and get a bloody nose. That's suffering. But that is not the suffering that I'm talking about here. And I find it amazing that Though, and there are, there's plenty of verses, folks, that, that talks about how God loves us. He cares for us. He's so deeply concerned about us. He provides for us just as He does the sparrow in the rain. Okay? He loves us. He meets our every need. He supplies our every need. He does care about every single abs minute detail of your life. He cares about every feeling you have, every emotion that you have, every hurt that you have i believe he's deeply concerned about all, all of that and i'm not trying to minimize any of that i'm only trying to explain christian suffering from the standpoint of ministry and how that relates to the gospel that we preach you cannot know it unless you're preaching the gospel it is reserved only for those that select few who by god's grace alone who are preaching the gospel and have come to understand how that we share in the sufferings of Christ and with one another in this sense. Since we are perfected, that is made complete, that is mature, we're made mature through Christian suffering, legalism cannot possibly know that suffering by experience. And since this is all true, Law-keeping will not result in an overflow of joy when His glory is revealed. That is what the text makes clear. The word glory, as God defines it, and I know we Christians throw that word glory around all the time. Well, glory, glory, glory. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, th glory this and glory that. Glory as God defines it. It... it the word, the very word, the substance of the word, folks, means what it means is, is it means that we, that it, it, it is a proper estimation of one's value or worth. Okay, you may have an old frying pan, you may have a new frying pan. One may be sanctified, the other set aside for use. The other may not be. You may favor that one, and you may not favor the other. One may to you have more glory. You may have an, uh, an estimation that your estimation of the value or the worth of that skillet, okay, may be far over and above and beyond your estimation of the value of that other old skillet. All right? 
That's what the word glory means. It, it is a proper estimation of one's value or worth. And in this case, we're talking about Christ. How much is, what is Christ worth? That's the word glory. So law keeping will not result in an overflow of joy when His glory is revealed. It, it can't, even now, it can't now rejoice, uh, rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may, and that is a subjunctive mood in the Greek, ye may, may, the mood of uncertainty, subjunctive mood, you may, maybe you will, maybe you won't, be glad also with exceeding joy. That's what the text says. The word exceeding also means to jump with joy. That's what the word exceeding there in the text means. So legalism, law keeping, walking according to the flesh, human merit, it does not know nor experience any of this. Light has no fellowship with darkness. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove, the word there means expose, prove to be guilty, prove to be guilty, them, Ephesians 5.11, but rather reprove them, Ephesians 5.11. Now, it could be, it could very well be, that there is, there is one other aspect of Christian suffering, that being the, uh, the suffering that one endures as a legalist listening to me tell them the truth concerning Christian suffering, but I assure you that that doesn't fit, that, that doesn't fit the biblical definition of true Christian suffering. So that's it. Until next time, we're going to move into chapter three. This is Steve. Thank you for suffering. I love you all. I truly do.